Hello, my name is Andrew Gettleman, and this is an introduction to the System for Integrated Modeling of the Atmosphere, or SEMA, as preparation for our virtual workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about what SEMA is and a quick history of SEMA. We'll talk a little bit about the workshop purpose, the rationale and the current vision, and we'll talk a little about SEMA science, both the draft frontier science goals, some examples, some progress to date, and the relationship to our existing community atmosphere models. I'll end with a summary in the workshop charge and a page on further information. So what is SEMA? SEMA is the effort to unify NCAR-based community atmosphere modeling across weather, climate, chemistry, and geospace. It's a configurable system. It is not a single model. It is within an Earth system model and it is a minimal set of interoperable components from which you can build atmospheric models. So physical chemical parameterizations, dynamical cores. SEMA is a common infrastructure or software framework and common methods. It's designed to be developed within the current community models and it requires changes to things outside of the atmosphere and some of our infrastructure to do things like coupling and data simulation and things like that. SEMA is also a community working together towards frontier applications. Applications flow from the diverse science goals we've identified, and it's for exchanging knowledge and tools about diagnostics, best practices, and evaluations. So SEMA started with a charge from the science visit teams of NSF to unify weather and climate modeling activities across NCAR. Internal discussions started in 2018. Over 50 NCAR staff have been involved over the last two, or two years or so. The concept has been socialized and we've gotten interactions and replies and adjusted things based on responses from NSF, from CESM, WARF workshops, music and chemistry workshops, and also CEDAR geospace workshops. A feasibility study, also known as SEMA version zero, started in late summer 2019. And now NSF would like the community input as we near the end of this feasibility phase. So the workshop that we're about to be embarked on, embark on is, an, is to provide an updated vision statement, is to provide input to the scientific objectives of SEMA and its future applications, is to identify use cases and workflow needs for atmospheric models, to identify critical near-term tasks for moving SEMA forward, and to codify the discussions into a white paper for NSF and the community. Our current community atmosphere models and existing applications look something like this. We have a weather, weather modeling frameworks with WARF and MPAS. We have a geospace model, the TIE GCM, and we have a climate model that also does chemistry, the uh, chem, uh, CAM inside of CESM, and then WACM and CAM CHEM, and there's also chemistry available in WARF CHEM. So far, what we've done is a small intersection between these two things. So elements of the geospace model have been embedded in WACM, the upper atmosphere climate model for a version we call WACM X, which is a partial implementation of a whole atmosphere model. The SEMA vision is to expand this region of overlap, to develop frontier applications for things like coupled weather on tropical cyclones, climate extremes at the weather scale, space weather applications, and air pollution, both in the climate scale and at the weather scale. So that's where SEMA comes in. SEMA is a common interface and common framework to build these atmospheric configurations. And it is actually the models that will encompass these different overlaps. It's composed of co common atmospheric model components and infrastructure, and it encompasses climate, weather, chemistry, and geospace components. It will have prediction capabilities. It'll complement complement and extend existing applications, and it will share infrastructure across those applications with a minimal set of components. And this is envisioned as an NCAR center-wide project. It includes education, tutorials, observations, and computation as part of the mix. So what if I'm happy with the models I use now? Well, WARF, MPAS, and CESM CAM will be supported for several more years. SEMA brings the following benefits to the next generation of those models. Better modeling across scales, such as non-hydrostatic dynamics for global models, conservative physics that works globally for mesoscale regional models, and community assimilation tools across all scales of modeling. Um, SEMA also brings a more complete inter integrated hierarchy of models from large eddy simulation or single column all the way up to Earth system modeling. It brings more robust software infrastructure. It should be easier to use and configure 
please take the survey to help make us happen. That, that'll be described at the end. And it's supposed to be modular code with community standards for existing applications. And we also intend to wrap into the SEMA project enhanced cross-scale evaluation tools and common tutorials. So we've developed with the community input sort of sample frontier applications. Many of these are prediction focused and that's implicit. Things like simulating tropical cyclones, a three kilometer refined mesh with a coupled ocean initialized uh, modeling. Um, simulating hydrologic extremes, either a 10 kilometer refined mesh or even a three kilometer non-hydrostatic initialized simulation. We intend to develop a coupled Arctic system model with 10 kilometer uh, coupled atmosphere coupled to an uh, ocean, land and land ice and sea ice models. A geospace application would be a 25 kilometer global atmosphere model that extends all the way to the ionosphere. And finally, doing a regional air quality simulations at 10 kilometers um, using also a refined mesh. But one of the questions of the workshop is what are we missing in all of this? So now I'm going to show some ex initial examples of these frontier applications. We can do parts of these things now, but these are sort of one off experiments. They're not integrated, they're not flexible, and they're not available to the community. So I'll show some examples for climate, weather, geospace, chemistry, and some initial diagnostics, and then some of the hierarchy we're building for atmospheric models. So none of these are fully integrated, but we're making progress on them. And we want to do this in a similar common system for the community in the same uh, modeling system. So this is a 14 kilometer refined mesh regional climate system over the United States. The gray colors are the outgoing long wave radiation, the high clouds, and the green colors are precipitation colored like a precipitation radar. And this is for a spring season. These are snapshots every few hours. And you can see tropical cyclones here. There's one in the, um, Pacific and mesoscale systems as they move across in the spring um, and synoptic system, mesoscale systems embedded in synoptic systems. And this also shows, uh, here's another gathering um, tropical cyclone that comes in and hits the uh, coast of uh, the Gulf Coast of North America. We can also look at weather type simulations. So this is a global cloud, cloud system resolving model or global storm resolving model. It's a four kilometer simulation done globally with MPASS and shown on the left is the outgoing long wave radiation, which looks very much like a satellite image. Shown on the right is a high resolution surface temperature. You can clearly see the diurnal cycle of temperature moving across the globe over the course of the day. Um, this is a representation of gravity waves at 110 kilometers in the atmosphere. So these are the waves that are actually bubbling up from the troposphere from things like tropical convection. And then you can also see the large scale tides at this level moving around. Um, these are the things from below that force the upper atmospheric circulation that modulates space weather. And this finally uh, is a surface ozone representation. The top is 100 kilometer resolution. It's near surface ozone. Um, the bottom is actually a refined mesh 14 kilometer version of the simulation. This is for just three days in August, but you can see the modulation of ozone with the diurnal cycle. And you can see the filamentation and high resolution structure you get in the 14 kilometer simulation. Also more of the extremes that you get uh, throughout the simulation that's more representative of, uh, for example, urban areas. And this illustrates how we can better define all these things. Whoops. These are just some examples of different diagnostic tools that we have that we can bear, bring to bear on the same model, both weather diagnostics, looking at individual object-based methods and daily temperature bias relative to stations, uh, looking at the diurnal cycle of precipitation, all the way out to mean state climate and chemistry metrics, or even long-term climate variability. This shows ENSO uh, both observations and um, representation of the El Nino Southern Oscillation in a, in a coupled climate model over 40 years. We can also bring models and observations together in new complex ways. This shows an example of flying, uh, simulating an aircraft set of observations inside of a general circulation model. What we're producing is size distributions from an advanced microphysical parameterization here with the distributions as the solid line. This is the diameter and the frequency of occurrence of cloud particles of different classes or categories like liquid, ice, rain, and snow. And then these are actually observations. So these are size distribution from in-situ aircraft probes. This was done as part of a Southern Ocean uh, project. So we hope to develop simulators in, as part of SEMA to better bring these things together to reproduce specific probes and also radars and LIDARs in, uh, from observations in the SEMA system. SEMA is a model hierarchy. 
uh, we envision it as being scalable and you can configure all sorts of models from it. So everything from single column and mesoscale or large eddy simulations up to uniform global GCMs or uh, regional models that might be refined mesh in addition to just general uniform meshes and then refined mesh global atmosphere models, which I've shown varieties of. And you could do things like having a global model like this that was just an aqua planet with no land. You could have idealized radiative convective equilibrium experiments, or you could have a fully coupled Earth system model with realistic topography. Um, the goal with SEMA is to be able to produce the right tool for the right job. It's a system of all different types of atmospheric modeling, allowing independent research using the right tool, integrated with an Earth system model, so we would have standard configuration, say, of an ESM that would be like the community atmosphere model, or standard resolution, standard configurations of a regional mesoscale model that would be like WARF or MPASS. What would this look like? Well, again, SEMA is a set of interoperable components such as the dynamical cores and the physics and chemistry with some sort of common interface to the rest of the modeling. So if you had a SEMA weather model, it would look like this. It might have physics very similar to WARF and a non-hydrostatic MPAS dynamical core. You could also, for example, build a version of this uh, with more CAM type physics, typical of a more global model if you wanted to run it coupled, for example. You could have a climate model version of SEMA that would look very similar to CAM does now with CAM6 physics and a spectral element hydrostatic dynamical core. Or you could actually put WARF physics uh, in with that spectral element dynamical core, for example, and run physics more appropriate for the mesoscale at higher resolution. You could also, of course, have a uh, chemistry climate model. This would be CAM6 physics with uh, spectral element dynamical core and the music of chemistry, very similar to the uh, ozone um, experiment that I actually showed a movie of. So where are we in SEMA? Well, we started with the single track project. That was the definition. We came up with a roadmap and some initial vision statements. Um, starting in January 2019, we came up with a SEMA terms of reference and we developed a reinvestment project last summer, this sort of SEMA version zero. We've been working along on SEMA version zero, developing some of these applications. Now we find ourselves at the community workshop and the goal is to produce a white paper, complete of our version zero uh, development and then launch after community input in the next fiscal year and after production of that white paper and feedback. So where are we right now with this version zero and the initial development? We've been developing a common infrastructure and a common repository for weather and climate code. We've um, also been putting a, the MPAS dynamical core inside of the coupled framework uh, so we can have a non-hydrostatic dynamical core available. We've been making modifications to the SEAM, common infrastructure for modeling the Earth, SEAM infrastructure used in CESM for better initialization, better regridding, and assimilation for global models. We've also been working on the scaling at high resolution to be able to produce a three kilometer atmosphere simulations and more robust and flexible workflows for a hierarchy of simulations. There's been ongoing effort to unify the chemistry and aerosols across the various scales of modeling that we use. This is called Musica. Uh, initial implementation and it uses MICM, which is a model independent chemistry mechanism being developed. We've also been developing and testing physical parameterizations across scales for this model and developing, we've been coupling uh, the atmospheric physics mesh to the geomagnetic grid for use in geospace applications. So what is the relationship between SEMA and existing community models? So the goal of SEMA is to support and extend existing applications like CAM, WACMX, WARF, and MPASS. We intend to engage and extend the existing communities. Many of you are part of those communities. We hope to give those communities and those models better access to prediction, initialization, and assimilation capabilities. We want to coordinate efforts for greater efficiency. Um, for engineering purposes and software, we want to do things right and do it once. Uh, we can then have a larger critical mass to develop a single system. And the way we envision this working is existing modeling groups uh, should contribute to and define the SEMA goals, and they should determine their own configurations. Or CESM, for example, will select a dynamical, a dynamical core and physical parameterizations appropriate for a global climate model. That may be a different choice for the weather community. We will work with existing governance structures and try as much as possible not to duplicate management. So SEMA enables frontier science across NCAR coupling climate and earth system modeling with meteorology, chemistry, geospace, polar applications. SEMA should be responsive to community science. It should expand the reach and capabilities of atmosphere modeling, and it should build a unified cross-scale community modeling system, and it should be integrated with existing models. 
So this brings us back to our workshop goals, an updated vision statement, input to the scientific objectives of SEMA and its future applications, to identify the use cases and workflow needs for atmospheric models, identify critical near-term tasks for moving SEMA forward, and codify the discussions into a white paper for the NSF and the community. So what are some of the questions and feedback we are, have for you and we hope you will be asking yourselves and asking us? And in preparing for this vision, we want to ask, what in the SEMA vision can be adjusted? What are the science frontiers in your research area? Have we identified the right applications and scope? What are the most important requirements and needs? And how could we make models easier to use? Finally, uh, some links to documents. Um, there is a SEMA wiki. You can just Google SEMA wiki NCAR. Um, this has the vision document and a version of this presentation. We also encourage you before the workshop strongly to please take the surveys that are uh, linked to on the wiki. There's data there for starting our discussions. Basically, the user experience survey is what how you use models, what are the pain points, what could we do better, and also the community survey helps survey the science applications in an objective way. And if you have questions, please bring them to the workshop. Thanks for your time and have a nice day.